The most valuable thing that any of us can do when we finish a car audio build is to reevaluate what we did right and what we did wrong so that we can improve in the future. If you're new here, I'm Mark, and in this video, I'm gonna be going over one of my old builds from over 10 years ago, the Green Taurus. I'm gonna talk about what I actually like about that build and what I would definitely do different today. My goal here is to help you guys avoid some of the same mistakes that I made, and I think it'll just be fun to go through one of my old builds. Let's hop on into this. So to get started, I wanna give you guys a little bit of an overview on the project here. That way you have an idea what the finished product is and it will help you guys kind of understand how the different pieces and components come together to make this build. As you can see, we have two subwoofers here, one on each side. These are two 15 inch MTX 7500 series subwoofers, the Thunder 7500s. Now each of these subwoofers is rated at about 400 watts RMS. And with the enclosures, it's hard to tell, but on the back side here, near the cabin area, they're actually ported. The enclosures are separated from one another in this location here and here with some pieces of wood. And in the middle here, we have an amplifier rack. That amplifier rack houses the amplifier itself, which is a Profile California 2000. If my memory serves me correctly, I believe this amplifier had an output of about a thousand watts RMS. As you can see, the build is completely fiberglass. Let's get into the fabrication process. Now to start the build process, I started with making the subwoofer enclosures themselves. So as you can see, we're looking at the left side of the trunk here, and you can see that I made the bottom board out of MDF. I also framed in some of the side area here with MDF, and then I captured the shape of the side of the trunk with fiberglass. Now keep in mind, this build is from over 10 years ago, and something I would recommend doing a little bit differently, and I definitely learned from this build, is you'll notice that I put the wood down first, and then I applied my mold tape. My thinking was that I'd be able to remove the majority of this tape. This tape would be forever ingrained in the fiberglass, no big deal, but that definitely ended up becoming an issue later down the line. It was super hard to remove this tape. First of all, I should have put the tape on first. I should have put it down before I put this wood piece on. I also should have used more tape. It would have been a good idea, rather than just one layer of kind of vertical pieces, I should have done a second layer of horizontal pieces just to make sure that everything was completely covered and it also just makes that surface a lot more stiff and easy to apply the fiberglass to. Now I also should have used some sort of mold release because like I said, it was really, really difficult to get the painter's tape off. If I would have just used a little bit of wax between that painter's tape and the fiberglass, it would have came off a lot more easily. Now something else I notice here, and as we go into the next pictures here, you'll see that these two different sides, I cut them with a jigsaw and tried to make them as consistent as possible, make them look the same but ideally this is why having a router is nice. I could have started with one side and really sanded it down and got it nice and smooth so you couldn't see those jigsaw marks and then I could have copied that profile using a router with a flush trim bit to the other side. Moving on to another picture, you can see here that I cut the back side to the best of my abilities to match the profile. If I were to do this now, what I would do is to put down a piece of cardboard on the bottom of the trunk and then I would use either a large washer or a profile tool in order to actually trace that line and make sure things were as good as possible. So here is a little bit better picture of applying the resin and the fiberglass. And you can see down in the corner here, I do have some bubbles. When you're doing the fiberglass process, bubbles are the enemy. A bubble is not strong. So I should have made sure when I was laying up this fiberglass material, you can even see some bubbles there. I should have really made sure that I dabbed that resin completely into the glass, smoothed that glass out as much as possible so that there were no air pockets. Here is doing the right side subwoofer enclosure and you can see I made a similar mistake much like the other side I again covered the tape on top of the wood which ended up being a problem and down the line so as you can see, my picture technology back in 2006, 2007 was extremely advanced. This picture is not the best, but you can see I've added these speaker rings here. Now when I added these speaker rings, because the left side of the vehicle and the right side of the vehicle aren't exactly the same, not even from the manufacturer, like it's a little bit different trunk layout on the left and the right, I really had to kind of eyeball these. I do think that the angles actually ended up pretty good. It doesn't look very good from this picture, but in the finished project, they turned out okay. 
what I would say nowadays, knowing what I know, I would pick something like, I know that this datum, this location for where the trunk arm folds down into, that's pretty much a consistent location. So I would find something like that, that I do know is consistent on left and right side. And I would measure all of my measurements off of that in order to determine some more angles. I think back then I wasn't really thinking like that. I just completely eyeballed the build. So you'll now see that I've added this center location piece for the amplifier rack, and you'll notice that the two just butt up against each other. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Something else I noticed here that I haven't mentioned yet is I also added some dowels. And what I did that for is on some of the flat areas of the fiberglass, flat fiberglass can be really, really hard to get strong unless you put down a ton of layers. What really adds strength is having some curvature to those layers. So I intentionally added those dowels after I had put down a couple of layers I added the dowels. It looks like I secured them with a piece of tape. Nowadays, I would probably secure them with something like CA glue. And then when you put more resin over that, it intentionally adds a curve and makes that layup a lot more strong. Rather than using dowels, something that I would recommend now is they actually have like a fiberglass rope that you can use where that resin really sinks into the rope and makes that rope nice and strong. And then again, it's the same idea. You have a nice curve that you are laying your fiberglass mat over. So here is a picture from the inside of the vehicle, and now you can get an idea of what the ports look like. Now something to talk about on these rings here, I did cut them using a jigsaw. Now I would definitely want to cut them using a router and a circle jig. That way you get a perfect circle. A circle is just one of those shapes that if it's not perfect, your eye is instantly going to be drawn to that imperfection. And even with covering these with body filler and uh, fiberglass, any imperfection would definitely stick out. I stretched this fleece material to actually give the enclosures their shape. Now the problem with the way I made those rings is I didn't give myself any sort of clearance for that material to nest down within. Kind of difficult to explain. Hopefully we'll come up with some good pictures, but you can see what I did is I literally just applied resin up until the edge here. Now notice the same thing on these center pieces here. I didn't account for any sort of clearance for that material. I literally just wrapped in the material over the edge of the board and then applied the resin and this is going to end up being problematic why because now I have extra material on that surface so those two surfaces for the subwoofer enclosure and then for the amplifier rack they're no longer going to perfectly mate with each other because they're no longer both completely flat they have this extra little bit of fiberglass and cloth material on top of them. The way to avoid this sort of issue is to use a rabbiting bit and cut a notch. I'll be showing you guys that on some of the other areas of this build. Again, having a rabbiting notch around this and around the port would have been really nice to have. You guys will see how much of trouble it ended up being later during the body working stage. So at this point, I've added some staples along the edge here to really secure it. I've added staples around the edge of the port, and I've also started applying some actual chop mat on top of that resin surface to give it more strength. I applied some tape around the insides of these different shapes with the idea of protecting the wood underneath and hopefully saving myself a little bit of body working time, being able to completely separate that resin easily by just peeling away the tape. Another view of the side enclosure here just to get an idea how they kind of came together and again you can see that tape I ended up not even pulling the tape off until much later in the project because it was just so difficult to do so <laughs> here's a good classic picture for you the young mr. mark car audio fab right there I'm proud of myself though I got a little bit of a uh, uh, dust protection going on with the face mask. So at this point, I've now peeled off a majority of the tape that I had protected those areas with. You can see it looks somewhat clean underneath those at least, but you can see I definitely have some rough edges here around the port and even around this ring that I was going to have to deal with with body filling. Now something else to definitely notice on these pictures, do you see all these like light white spots? What a lot of that is, I think I've sanded it a little bit at this point because they were high spots, but I can tell you what was underneath that them was more bubbles. You really have to make sure when you're laying the fiberglass mat, the chop mat on top of your surface, you want to use something like a fiberglass roller to really roll out those bubbles and to uh, make all those fiberglass layers adhere with each other perfectly. So at this point, I started adding some body filler. I don't think I had permanently mounted the sub. I just set it down in there, kind of to get an idea.
idea what it would look like. You can see I was already having some issues. Here's a low spot right here. You can see because when I sanded, it didn't really touch that part of the body filler. And I knew I was going to have to kind of even this all out. I think eventually in the process, I just ended up applying body filler to this whole surface and then block sanding it to get it nice and flat. I'll show you guys what I mean by a rabbited groove a little bit later. Having the rabbited groove would have made things a lot more simple. Now something else I noticed is just based on the color of this body filler, it probably wasn't a very good body filler. I don't really remember what I used, but in the future I finally splurged and got some nice body filler and realistically I think like the price difference from nice body filler to cheap body filler is really only like 10 or 15 dollars and once I got that nice body filler I'll tell you guys, I will never go back. I like using Rage Gold now, and I will link that down in the video description. So if some of you guys out there need to know a good body filler, Rage Gold, I'm telling you, sounds like butter. So here you can see some more body filler process going on. At this point, I still haven't really started making the actual amplifier rack itself. There's like I was talking about, I completely covered that surface with body filler to get it nice and flat. And you can see a different color of body filler. I'm definitely using a little bit better body filler at this point which allowed me to sand a lot more effectively. Now here is a great picture of the monstrosity of the port. This isn't the finished product at all. I definitely had to spend a ton of time sanding these and getting them as flat as possible. There's a little bit better picture on, on the opposite side of it, a little bit more finished. But again, rabbiting would have been so much better. In the end, I ended up just coating these with like an underbody coating spray just to give them more of a finished look, if you will. And whoa, all of a sudden we're in primer. So I've completely primed them at this point. Definitely not the best body work in the world. It doesn't look horrible. But anyways, a little bit more of a finished look here and definitely need to move on to making that centerpiece. Now at this point, I had a chance to actually listen to the subwoofers and they sounded decent, but one major mistake that I made is I installed all of this stuff into the trunk with no sound treatment materials. And that makes for a great time to thank monthly channel sponsor, Soundskins. Every vehicle is made of several different plastic panels and sheet metal that can easily rattle once we add an upgraded car audio system. Soundskin sound treatment materials help us to reduce that noise and to improve the sound as we're not losing acoustic energy to the vibration of those panels. Soundskins has several different materials for sound treating your vehicle from the Soundskins Pro material that has a layer of acoustic foam built in to their light material and even to the Soundskins rings. To give their materials a try, they've actually hooked us up with a car audio fabrication fan only discount for you guys. So to check out details to that, you can take a look down in the video description. Moving on here, we're going to start making the center amplifier rack. If you look at the side pieces here, once again, no rabbited edge, but you will notice on this ellipse shape that I made here, it does have a rabbited groove. Now, I was definitely just starting to experiment with router tricks and using rabbiting edges and that kind of thing. And you can see that it's definitely not as deep is what it should have been. I'll talk about that a little bit more later, but it does at least have that rabbited groove. I did it around these two different ellipses that I used. This one here is to actually mount the capacitor. This previous one was to mount a small distribution block and they're actually on the back side of the amplifier rack. I don't even know if I have any pictures of it once it was finished, but you will notice that I also added a round over to the main plate that holds the amplifier rack and I intentionally went a little bit deeper with that round over to give myself this groove. These grooves on the amplifier rack and those ellipses is what I've been talking about. It gives us some clearance. So once we actually wrap this shape with material, at least it's kind of down at the same surface level. Now again, I definitely should have rabbited the edges here. I don't think I did do it to those side plates because I had made those first, even though I could have easily turned it up on the table and done it. I didn't. Not sure why. But anyhow, you can also see that I made the mistake of using a lot of these different staples. Now what's wrong with staples, you might ask? Because I didn't make that rabbited groove quite deep enough, those staples ended up coming back to bite me later because I was constantly having to sand through them. It was tearing through all of my sandpaper. You could see them. They would easily pull themselves out and leave a little gouge in the body filler. It was definitely a huge pain. Knowing what I know now, I would use something like a super glue, a CA glue to actually adhere this material if I was even doing some sort of stretch fabrication like this with the materials. But at least this was a little bit more of a clean look, especially on these areas here. Again, not so much the side, but on these areas, 
definitely a lot cleaner looking as you can see just from using those rabbited grooves. Nice little up close picture of after the resin was applied to this cloth here and allowed to dry. And here you can see I'm starting to apply the actual fiberglass materials themselves. Now something I noticed here is you can see I left straight edges when I was applying these fiberglass materials. I would only recommend using the straight edges when you're actually matching it up with a straight edge. So I could have used this straight piece here over on the sides. That way I had a nice clean transition to the edge but there shouldn't really be a straight edge there because you're gonna end up with a slight difference once you actually get this all flattened out. You should try to tear the pieces as much as possible and get those fibers of fiberglass to actually lay together with each other while you're putting the resin on. So you can see here I am now doing all the body filling process. Lots and lots of sanding. Now you do see I have one single sanding block in the background, otherwise I'm using my hand. Something you should definitely look at getting are some foam sanding blocks that could really match contact as well while you're sanding so that you can keep that contour nice and consistent you're not having like finger grooves from where your fingers are applying uneven pressure on the body filler so we go from that to this and you can see I have everything in a light coat of primer. Now you'll notice I have these transition gaps here. You'll see that I actually made some fiberglass pieces. What I did is I actually protected each of these shapes with a bunch of painter's tape. I laid down a layer of fiberglass on top of that painter's tape, and then I cut it and trimmed it to size, and then it looks like I just wrapped it with some suede. You can see that I cut several different holes for the different wiring that would come out to the different devices. If I were to do that again in the future, I would definitely use something like a grommet to make it look a lot more clean. I think I would hide the wiring completely. I don't know that I would ever have it kind of coming out where it's exposed like this anymore. And on the topic of the wiring, I did actually add this large cutout underneath where the amplifier was, both for cooling purposes and it gave me a way to actually reach my hand up inside here and run all of the different wires. So at this point I'm painted, and again, you could see definitely had some rough times with sanding all of this on the inside of the ring to make it look perfect. And again, that's just because of the lack of using that rabbited groove. If I would have had that rabbited edge over here on the outside of the ring, that would have been my transition point. I would have been able to make it nice and clean and easily sand it on the outside here. And then on the inside, it would have just been all that original wood MDF ring that I had made. So it would have been nice and smooth, especially if I would have used a router. So everything is now color painted and clear coated. And I wanna remind you guys, this was not done, as I'm sure you can tell, in a body shop. This was literally painted in a barn. So don't judge me too hard. Everyone knows the struggle. And that's why I stress so many times, everyone starts from somewhere, no one just all of a sudden has an awesome shop that they can do painting in and fabrication work. Everyone starts from somewhere and it's all about, you know, working through and upgrading your tool set and upgrading, you know, even your own skill set and what you're able to do. The next picture we're going to see is a close up of this area here. What this actually allowed is for the trunk arm to fall down into the box and Thank God I planned for that from the start. I've heard so many stories of people building like huge elaborate subwoofer enclosures. They go to put it in the trunk and they go to close the trunk and the trunk arm hits the top of the enclosure. So if you are building a full trunk layout, definitely, definitely make sure that you, you know, take a look from the inside of the vehicle. Where does the trunk arm go? So here we have a nice finished picture. Now, I'm not sure why I didn't paint this side for the trunk arm location. I think it was just being so excited to finally get it installed. And that's definitely another tip, guys. Take your time. I know I know you are excited. I, trust me, I'm always excited to get everything playing, to listen to it. But take your time because you're going to be more frustrated with yourself if you get everything installed and then you're having to pull it all back out just so you can fix one thing. But here we have finished pictures and I think it turned out pretty good for being one of my first major full out trunk builds. A lot of my friends really loved the build and that's kind of what got me down this road of enjoying custom car audio fabrication. Guys, just remember, everyone starts from somewhere. So there we have it my friends, now we can ride this Taurus off into the sunset. I hope that this video helped you guys understand some of the mistakes I made in that build so that you guys don't make them in the future. I know this is a new style of video for the channel. If you guys can let me know what you think about it and post a comment down below, that'd be appreciated. Or if you have any comments about the build. After all, having a discussion back and forth is what being a community is all about. 
If you're new here, here on this channel, I do car audio reviews and tutorials and build log videos. If you'd like to check out some of my other videos, you can do so here on screen. A special thanks goes out to John, Brian, John, Ali, Nick, Bo, Steve, Jerry, and Emmanuel, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to those guys for helping with the making of these videos. If you want to learn more about that, check it out down in the video description. As always, my friends, thank you for watching.